Hey everyone, let's take a look at number one in section 8.4. We're going to find the centroid of the region lying underneath the graph of the function f of x equals 84 minus 28x over this interval. Of course, it's under this uh, function, but above the x-axis. I've drawn that here, and we basically have a triangle, um, so it's pretty easy to actually calculate the centroid of a triangle. Um, but we're going to do it, of course, using calculus. Um, and, and again, drawing the region, even if it's just a rough graph here, obviously I um, didn't really scale the axis or have graph paper or anything, but you know, if you carefully sketch it, that could be helpful, especially when you get your answer to see if your centroid is reasonable. Okay, we're going to compute the mass of this planar lamina. Think of this uh, triangular region as being a, uh, a thin uh, plate, if you will, that's a uh, some uniformly dense material with density rho. Rho will be our density. Um, could be in uh, kilograms per cubic meter or something like that. Of course, we're just going to multiply it by actually the area. Just think about the um, thickness of this plate or, or lamina as being one, one square unit. Um, so, um, Let's take a look at um, finding this area then. What are we going to do? We're going to integrate the function 84 minus 28x, right? That function over the interval from 0 to 3. Now we can use calculus, find the antiderivative, and use the fundamental theorem of calculus. But again, this is a triangle. We know the area, it's 1 half base times height. Since that's a 90 degree angle here, the base is three units, the height is 84 units, I can go right to it, and this is 126. Of course, 126 times the density. Um, so again, this, this would be area, I'll say in, in square meters. You can think about it as being a volume if it's one meter deep, if you will, or thick. So we'd have cubic meters times some density, which would give us the, you know, the density in kilograms or whatever. Okay. Or, or sorry, the mass, excuse me, in kilograms. Mass is density times the um, volume. Okay, what about the moment about the x-axis? The moment about the x-axis, we have these formulas here, or a lamina with constant density, uh, rho, and bounded by top function f of x, bottom function g of x. So we're only considering regions that are vertically simple uh, between the vertical lines x equal a and x equal b. These are the moments. Of course, in our case, the g of x, the bottom function is zero, and so we simplify down to these. Here's the moment about the x-axis. Uh, it's basically half of rho and then integrating the function squared, the, the square of the function. So I'm going to do one half the function, which is 84 minus 28x squared. Um, now you could FOIL this out and just do the integration that way. I'm going to do a simple u substitution. u is 84 minus 28x. So my du is negative 28 dx. And I have this relationship between, therefore, du and dx. I'm going to replace the dx with this. Of course, this will be u squared. And then I do need to change my limits, right? When x is 0, u is 84. And when x is 3, turns out 28 times 3, right, is exactly 84. That's why we, the graph is on the x-axis at that point. So now um, I can do the change, right? I've got, um, bring the 1 half out, row over 2. The dx is negative 1 28th du. This thing is the u squared. And our limits went from 0 to 84 and from 3 to 0. So cleaning that up, of course, 2 times 28 is 56. And if you're not comfortable with going from 84 to 0, you can change the limits of integration. You can flip them. What do you need to do, though? Just change the sign. So this integral will be the same as this one here. And now the antiderivative u squared is u cubed over 3. Plug in 84 for u. Plug in 0. Of course, you get 0. Uh, so simplifying that expression gives me this for my moment about the x-axis. The moment about the y-axis, right, is uh, density integra uh, times the integral of x times f of x. And so I've got x times f of x here. Go ahead and uh, simplify first by distributing, if you will, the x, and then uh, find the antiderivative of 84x and 28x squared. 
plug in the upper limit of three, lower limit of zero, subtract. Um, of course, plugging in zero, we get zero. So plugging in three, we get these two quantities. That gives me 126 rho. The x coordinate of the centroid is this moment about the y-axis we just found divided by the mass. And notice this is the moment about the y-axis. And interestingly enough, that's also the mass. And so notice when I divide, I just get one. The x coordinate of the centroid is one. The y coordinate is the moment about the x axis, which is this, uh, divided by the uh, mass, rather. Again, the densities, uh, the rows cancel. And when I divide, this divides evenly 28 times. And so very nicely, our centroid is at 1, 28 for this problem. Again, your numbers might be slightly different, but it should be comparable. And just check, you know, does that seem reasonable? X is 1 is here. Y is 28. This is 84. It's about one third of the way up there. And that would be the location. In fact, basically, we're going one third of the way, right, this way, and one third of the way this way. And that's true for um, any right triangle in this configuration, of course, where the origin is the uh, the right angle, if you will. But at any rate, that certainly makes sense that my centroid is located here. If it were located, you know, over here, you know, down here in the corner, obviously that would not be true. Or obviously if it's off the, the, the shape in this case, that would not be true. And so always see if your answer is reasonable. Okay. Hope this helps on this one.